Hey guys, welcome back. I'm top music attorney, Miss Crystal. And as you guys know, I run an entertainment law firm. I'm also a music attorney. And you know, a call and question that I get from clients a lot is considering whether to stay independent or to sign with a record label. Now you might just be starting your music career. And so you're trying to figure out which path to take as an independent artist, whether to say indie, whether to sign with that label, or you actually have a record label deal on the table you have an offer and so you're considering whether it's the right fit for you. So what I'm going to do in today's video is that I'm going to break down the pros and cons of being an independent artist versus signing with a record label. So if you're ready, let's go. Hi guys, I'm top music attorney, Miss Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney, public speaker, and creator of the Top Music Attorney School for Artists and Record Labels. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records, and most importantly, I'm an independent artist. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss my weekly videos, giving you my best tips on the music business, industry news updates, and teaching you how to stay legally protected. All right, so we're gonna start with the pros and cons of being an independent artist or staying an independent artist if that's what you're doing right now. Before we get to that, make sure you subscribe, turn on those bell notifications, do all the YouTube things. So not only you can be a part of our family and community here, but it helps to tell the YouTube algorithm gods to push this video out to other people who might find it useful. So first and foremost, the pros of being an independent artist, right? So of course you get to be in charge of your career. Right, so when it comes to creative decision making and business decision making, you are 100% in the driver's seat. That is not the case when you sign with a record label and we're gonna talk about that, but the reality is you give up that control to a record label when you sign. Another benefit, another pro of being independent is that you own 100% of your music. So that means if you have a song that goes viral, that blows up, that gets a big placement in TV or film, you're gonna be 100% recipient of all of those funds, that's always amazing. But look, I mean, guys, what I'm talking about is that you are the boss of your career. And there's really something to be said for how good that feels, but how powerful that can be, especially when your product, your brand, what you're doing as an artist starts to take off. Because now you're calling all the decisions right? And you're really driving your career. And so it's going to be very meaningful to you as you continue to kind of develop in your career. And you'll be very happy with the decisions that you make because they would have been your decisions. On the flip side, what are the cons of being an independent artist? Well, one is that you got to do everything yourself particularly in the beginning. You are your own manager. You are your own booking agent. You are your own PR person. You're having to write your press releases, come up with your EPKs. You're also, of course, your own songwriter, producer, and even your own music video director. And while, of course, that's an extra layer of things that you need to learn and get good at, it also is a pro and a really good thing because at the end of the day, you need to know how to do all of this stuff yourself. You can't possibly expect someone to be able to really act on your behalf if you don't know what it is that you're doing. And if you have the experience yourself of having done this at some point, and then eventually you get someone to come in and they can help to take over. Obviously, as an independent artist, you can get a manager, right? You can get a PR person. But in the traditional sense of really starting yourself and kind of bootstrapping your career, you, you got to learn how to do all this stuff yourself. And even from the marketing standpoint, you know, when I kind of set aside the reservations that I had as an independent artist to just challenge myself to learn marketing, learn how to set up ads on Facebook and Instagram, learn how to create reels and get onto TikTok, all of this was very intimidating to me. But lo and behold, you know, I was able to significantly start to expand the reach of my music, my brand, even stuff that I do as an attorney because I was willing to take on the commitment of actually just learning how to do this stuff myself. And I mean, there's something to be said for the fact that no one will ever know your brand, your music, your product better than you. And so having a real handle on what you wanna do, who you wanna be, who you wanna be known as, you know, as an artist, all of this is fantastic and something that you're gonna really appreciate that you were forced to go through. So while it is absolutely a con because you gotta do it yourself, and that's very overwhelming for most artists, I would argue you have to learn how to do all of this stuff for yourself at some point. 
Another con of being an independent artist is that you have to pay for everything, right? So out the gate, you are not having a record label help to pay for various expenses. We'll talk about why that's a pro or a con for signing with a record label, but as an independent artist, you need to pay for everything, which usually means you're bartering, right? You're doing exchanges of services, you're getting favors. And that can definitely be tough for some people, but you know, as an example, some of the first music videos that I did in my teens, it was that same kind of situation. I didn't have money to hire a film team to help with my music videos, but I had to get good at kind of selling some, you know, business proposition. How can we do an exchange of services? Or, you know, uh, would you be willing to work with me? And just selling the product of this is so good, you should be a part of it. And I was able to do that and I was able to get some great deals. So I was able to do my first couple of music videos on an incredibly, incredibly low budget. Another con of being an independent artist is that you have no one else to blame if you fail. You have no one else to hide behind or to otherwise say, oh, I just can't get a response from, let's say, my record label. They're not responding to me. I can't move forward in my career. It's all their fault. No, it's your fault if things are not moving forward in your career and there's not action being taken every single day. So that puts 100% of the obligation on your shoulders. And of course, when it comes to things like connections and access, you know, traditionally record labels, especially the bigger ones, right, that actually do have connections and relationships to, for example, you know, Spotify, playlist curators, booking agents, managers for artists where you can potentially get features or collaborations. It can be tougher for independent artists until they get to a point of a certain level of success. I think when you get to a certain level of success and notoriety, you'll be able to kind of, you know, form these relationships yourself. But, you know, for the average independent artist, it is tough to have that kind of access that larger labels kind of already have in place. So now let's switch gears and let's talk about when it comes to signing with record labels, what are the pros, what are the good things, and why do we want to do it? Starting with kind of where I just left off. Labels have a tendency to have relationships and systems in place. Now, whether they're going to utilize those relationships for your benefit is not something that's ever going to be in the actual contract. And that's a part of the gamble that you take by signing with a record label. And, you know, when it comes to my discussion on what are the pros of signing with record labels, I'm focusing on mid to large size you know, record labels and major record labels, because quite frankly, you could start a record label today, right? I have a course that teaches you all about how to do this yourself. And it doesn't mean that you have these relationships and connections. So I don't want to confuse you by saying just because it's a record label, it automatically has these things in place. I'm going from the baseline presumption that this is an established label that can actually do something for you and your music career. And if that's the case, great. Hopefully they can get you show bookings. They can get you on playlists. They can set up collaborations with some of their other artists that are signed and maybe in the same genre as you. But as much as it's a gamble for the record label to sign an artist, it goes both ways. And that's something we're gonna talk about here in a second. But nonetheless, assuming everything is as it should be, there's a potential that the label can come in and help to elevate your career and also give you that mentorship, right? You hope that the executives at the record label have some experience that they can guide you in your career. They can give you recommendations on songs. They have those connections. These are all the things that we hope we get when we sign with a record label. So then what do we have to be afraid of if we sign with record labels? Well, on our list of cons when signing with record labels, the biggest one is that you do lose ownership in your music. And this is the standard term across the board for almost every single record label deal that you'll ever do. You do not own your music if you sign with the label. And the reason that this is a big deal is because going back to my original points of, we hope that the label's gonna elevate our careers and make us big stars. Well, if they don't, and then at the end of the relationship, we don't even own the music. What did we get out of all of that? Well, for a lot of artists, it will be regret. Regret that they signed away the rights to their music. And sometimes even in the instance that the music takes off and is successful, because some artists will have regret based on the fact that they lost what they call their legacy, right? So their songs, their creative works, their life. They don't own any of that anymore. And, you know, we can refer to more, you know, notable names like Kanye and Taylor Swift, right? They have definitely gone to bat uh, publicly with their record labels and being very upset about losing 
you know, the ability to even purchase back their masters. But besides the ownership issue, another big problem has to do with royalties. So, you know, record labels are kind of infamous for inflating costs because the way it works with your record label deal is that you sign the contract, the label says, hey, we're gonna help you pay for your costs, your music videos, your studio sessions, your producers. But all of that is technically being paid by you. And the way it works is that the label is advancing the money as if it was a loan. And so all monies that come in from your music and from other stuff in your career as well, a big portion, if not all of that, will go to reimburse the record label. So again, it's a glorified loan. But in the calculation of, well, if you paid, you know, Mr. Big Shot music producer $50,000, you know, I don't think that he was worth $50,000, but that wasn't your decision to make. And so now that money is owed nonetheless, and you aren't getting paid your royalties. And so, you know, this is when I get the phone calls of, you know, ah, help me, I haven't gone and paid my royalties in all these years of with the label. And then we have all kinds of accounting issues. And so it's a very common issue that does come up, but another con when it comes to signing with a record label is the control issue, right? So whereas we were talking about being independent, being in control of your career, making all of the decisions creatively from the business standpoint, you lose all of that when you sign with a record label. Now you might luck out and you'll sign with a label that kind of, you know, sees the value in what you're doing artistically and will let you kind of blossom. But that only happens for so long as you are being successful. So what I mean by that is that you have, you know, artists that might get signed because they're avant-garde and they're kind of weird. But as soon as that's not selling for the label anymore, the label's gonna say, hey, you need to try this, you need to do that. And so there are just countless stories of people who have been signed with labels where, you know, their biggest issues are number one, they lost the rights to their music. And number two, while they did have this relationship with the record label, they weren't calling the shots. So for example, their favorite songs never got released and maybe some watered down commercial version of their sound was what kind of got out, but it didn't represent them as artists. So kind of comparing now these two categories of being an independent artist versus signing with a record label, you can look at it from both sides of the coin to say, well, you know, there are obviously huge benefits of staying independent, but why does it matter if you don't do anything in your music career? It never takes off because you don't know what you're doing. You never learn how to kind of get your marketing, for example, correct. So yeah, you own your music, but no one ever hears it. Or conversely, well, the record label knocks it out of the park, makes you a big star, but at the end of the day, you own absolutely nothing. You're barely getting paid because, you know, the majority of your money is gonna go to pay these inflated expenses. So your question might be, all right, so then what is the best strategy depending on which route I go? And what I would say is that if you wanna stay independent, well, you have to kind of put on that business hat to take on the responsibility to learn how to do all this stuff, right? So as an independent artist myself, this is something I had to learn the hard way and it's a hard road to go on, but you'll be glad that you put in the effort and went to school basically. Take yourself to school and learn about the music business. Learn about your contracts, learn about about your trademarks and your copyright. I mean, I literally put out a book for this purpose because I was so frustrated that I didn't feel like there was anything out there really to even help me when I was coming up. And there's stuff that I just wish that I knew. So if you need help, obviously there's lots of resources. I have my YouTube channel, Top Music Attorney, but check out the book. You can get it as a digital download. I have free contract templates that come with it, but I'm also teaching you the day-to-day -day stuff. So if you are gonna stay independent, rock it but go hard and put in the effort every single day to continue to build your career. Now, conversely, if you say, well, I want to be a signed artist. I want kind of the glitz and the glam associated with being signed with, let's say, a major label. That's fine. You should not try to get signed with a label too soon. Don't try to get signed while you don't have anything going on. You have to build up your numbers, your fan following, your streams, real streams, don't be paying for fake streams. That does not end well for anybody. But the strategy should be to get some negotiation power because you are now a successful brand. You are someone that is doing something that a label wants. So the label comes to you and makes you the offer. You're not going after the label to say, please sign me because now you don't have any negotiation power. So, I mean, really, as far as the next step of what you need to do in your career, it's the same. Whether you're staying independent or trying to get signed to a record label, you got to go in hard and you have to build your business, your career, your fan following. And that takes work and effort every single day.
but also an understanding of how the music business works. So that, for example, if you do sign with a record label, you're not going to be taken advantage of because you know how these deals work. You know what you should be getting. And that takes, again, you kind of educating yourself and going to school for your music career. If you're interested in checking out a little of what I'm up to in the music realm, just search Miss Crystal on all music platforms. Don't forget to come say hi on social media. I'm at Top Music Attorney on all social media platforms. Like I said earlier, it's very much about kind of taking yourself to school and getting educated on how the music business works. I have free stuff to kind of help you guys get started as far as free courses, teaching you about contracts. I do have that book. I even have a course on how to set up a record label if you want to become your own record label, own your music, get 100% of your royalties. So you can check all that out at topmusicattorney.com. Don't forget to do all the youtube -y things. Subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any videos from your new favorite top music attorney. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm Miss Crystal.